Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Quilters Apothecary. Today, what I'm doing in the studio is four quilts using a specific Baptist fan. Now, I do want to make sure to give credit to this design, and this design was actually chose by my client. And the name of the design is Baptist Fan Edge to Edge, and it is by Allison Payette. And hopefully I said that right. P-A-Y-E-T-T-E, -T -T -E, and it is purchasable at threesistersfabric.com. Okay, and of course, there is the picture of this particular Baptist fan. I'll bring it in just a little bit closer so you can see it. Now, with this Baptist fan, of course, each row is a single row. Now, because of that, with this particular edge to edge, what I wanted to show you on the Pro Stitcher when we actually do this is how to set this up for a stagger. Now, I call it a stagger because it needs to stagger 50% in every other row so that it nests like this. Now, what Pro Stitcher calls it is wrap, and that would be what I would refer to as stagger. So I'm going to show you how I do it. There's lots of different ways to do it, and you can go check out other tutorials to see their way, but this is the way I do it, and it works best for me. So let's go ahead. Let's first turn on the machine, and then we'll get started. So I'm going to walk around to the back of the machine, and again, I always let people know, I always wait until I'm just about ready to start before I go ahead and power everything up. In other words, I don't go ahead turn on my machine, wait two hours, and then set up my edge to edge. I go ahead and I start everything when I'm ready to start quilting. So I've already loaded a quilt. I have basted around the edge. And so now I am actually ready to set up and get started. So I'm gonna walk around. I'm gonna first turn on our trip light because I always have that off. That way my carriage is not constantly buffering and then I'm going to turn on the power on my machine. And now I'm going to come back around and I'm going to turn on my tablet. Push, hold, till about five, release. And we have the Acer tablet. Rich, what version of Pro Stitcher are we running for this video? 537. Okay, so now my tablet is fired up and it's ready to go. And so the first thing I'm going to do is define my area. So Mr. Ritchie, if you want to show them on the quilt where I'm at, down below here, what I'm going to do is I am going to go over. Now, with this quilt, this quilt is perfectly straight. So this edge is great. Um, if it wasn't based on the roller, then I would go down to the bottom and then slowly come up so that that way I would make sure that I got the whole quilt in in case it was weird on the bottom roller down here. In fact, if we can kind of go down here and show that. Okay, so you can see this is perfect. But if the first part of the quilt that had rolled on here was here because it wasn't uh, a square quilt, then what I would do is I would first bring my machine down here, I would bring it over as far as that would go and then out another inch and then I'm going to go back to the back of the machine. But this one is pretty well set up. So let's head back up to the top. So what we see here basted is true all the way through the quilt. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go about an inch, inch and a half out, and about an inch, inch and a half up. And I'm going to define my area. Now up at the screen... I want to double check everything. Everything is um, has been basted. So what I want to do is uh, I've got 12 stitches per inch, which is where I want to quilt at. I like to run my crews at 100 per, per at 100. And so now what I'm going to do is get rid of that screen. So that's gone. The next thing I'm going to do is to define my area. So I'm going to go up here. Do we want to squeeze in on that screen? And I'm going to go to area. And so I'm going to be a two-corner, do a two-corner um, sizing to define the area. 
I could use this button right here and hit that, or I can go ahead and let's go down to my handlebar, which is what I typically use. And I'm gonna use my star for that upper corner. Okay, so now if we widen our shot, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go over to the other end of the quilt on the diagonal. And I'm gonna go down to the bottom <clears throat> as far as the throat machine will take me. Throw it on the machine will take me. And then I'm gonna go up about an inch and I'm gonna be about an inch, inch and a half off the quilt. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit the star again. Okay, so you just heard that. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring the machine over here so you see what I have so far. You tell me when you I have that where you want it, Mr. Ritchie. Is that good? Okay. So now, I have defined my area, but it's not on my screen. So to see what I have, because it says I have a width of 55.78 and a height of 16.44 because of my throat space. But I don't see it here. So I go right down here where the home button is. You see the little house, and I push that. And now it shows me my space. But I know that that's not right because that's simply my throat space. So I need to go back to my height here. I'm simply going to touch the screen on my height in that box, and now I can enter in what my quilt length is. My quilt length on this is actually 60 inches, but I'm going to add about three or four inches because when I get down to the bottom, I'm going to crop it anyways. So I'm going to add 65 inches. Doesn't matter. We I can make it 100 inches if I want, but I'm going to add an extra four or five inches just to take up a little bit of extra space. And then I'm gonna hit enter. You always wanna make sure to hit enter and now you see that it showed here that my height changed to 65 inches, but it doesn't show my whole box. So I'm gonna go down here to the house again and I'm gonna hit the house and now everything's right up there on the screen. That is the space for my quilt. Now at this point, what I could do, is, and I would suggest for you to do, is to go ahead and test your space by simply taking your machine and moving around the quilt. I'm not gonna do that. I know mine is right. Um, it would be the same thing that we did on the um, original Edge to Edge video, the movie, that's on the YouTube channel as well. Okay, so now what I wanna do is I want to bring in my design so I'm going to go up here to File. I'm sorry, File on the top. We don't want to go down to the File on the next ribbon. We go to the top File, and then we go to Design. And I want to find my Baptist fan. Now, it's already here because I've already used it before, and the last thing I used always shows up as the first thing. So I could do a shortcut and hit that. or I could open my file and go in and find my Baptist fan in my library. Then we have ours set up so that they are alphabetical. I'm gonna hit my Baptist fan, push that, and then I'm gonna push open. Now that just brought in my Baptist fan. Now, one thing that I do is, that's right there on that screen, I'm gonna take my machine and I am simply going to test. I'm gonna test the size. So I'm gonna go there, and I'm looking at my quilt, and I've got my finger um, here testing the size. And Mr. Richie, will you show exactly what I'm doing here? I know this design because I've used it a few times, so I know that on the screen, it's at the bottom of the design. So if we wanna go up to the screen for a second, Okay, so I know that that's at the bottom of the design. And now what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to go up to the top of the design. And now let's go back down to the quilt where my finger is. 
and I can see that this is the width of that design. That's too big for me. I want it to be a little bit smaller for this particular quilt. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to resize the single design. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up here, I'm gonna hit modify. I'm going to then go here right underneath and hit resize. Now, I see that there's a line across here, but I wanna make sure that this design is kept, um, is it constraint, is that correct? The constraint is kept, so I wanna keep it even both ways so it's not gonna go narrow or it's not gonna go wide as I'm changing the size. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here where the little lock is and I'm gonna hit lock. And if you saw over here, it put a crosshair right in the design. And that's gonna keep it now perfectly constrained um, as I come down here and hit minus or plus, I can make it bigger, I can make it smaller. I'm gonna hit minus because I want it to go a little bit smaller. I'm gonna take it down to about um, 8.5 inches. It's actually 8.37 inches. Um, I'm gonna look at that, I'm gonna test that. I like that size, that's kind of a nice, size for me, okay? So that's the one I'm gonna use. Okay, so now the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to go ahead and I'm gonna grab my design and I am going to, before I do that, I'm sorry, there's one more thing I like to do. I just change this. So I had, normally what I'll do is I'll move it up into the corner. I didn't do that this time. Um, I just hit minus, 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 uh, hit the constraint. I changed it. So I added a bunch of changes in there. Um, and what I like to do is now that that's the size that I want it to be, I'm going to go, go ahead and baseline the single design because now everything's good there. And what that baseline does is it, it doesn't erase anything, but it locks all the changes in and it gets rid of all that extra feedback, all the minus, 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 all the noise that I just created, so to speak. So now I have uh, made that the size that I want it. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab it because again, micromanager, I like to control everything. I don't wanna hit fill and do all that. I wanna decide how everything is set up. So I'm gonna grab it. Remember, when you grab it, you grab it, and where you want it, you stop and you put, put your finger away. You don't keep pushing, move, pushing, move. That can mess things up. You always want to grab something, move it to where you want it, and then stop. And then if you want to reposition, grab it and move it to where you want it. So you got to be real true about your fingers. Okay, so now I have that in place where I want it in the upper corner. The next thing I want to do is now I need to fill my space. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go over here and I'm gonna hit repeat. I just hit repeat. And so now I go over here and it's on horizontal because we wanna take it and fill it horizontally. So I'm gonna hit repeat. Make sure you don't hit gap. You wanna hit repeat plus, 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 plus. Now, let me explain something to some of you. With this new version of software that we're using, point-to-point -point is already set to go. With the older versions, you would have to push point-to-point. -point. And what that would do is lock all of the singles and create one whole row. Now, I will say this to you. We have the new version on all three of our machines. We have one of them that actually the point to point does not automatically come on. So it's just, that's just the way that that one is. And so what I'm gonna do, and what I always like to do is even though this point to point is already highlighted, I am gonna go ahead, turn it off, and then turn it back on. That way I know that this design is completely connected. Now, I wanna clarify something here. The next thing I need to do is I need to create my vertical rows before we actually go into the stagger or the wrap. You're going to be tempted from how we do the other 
uh, edge to edge when there's not going to be a wrap or a stagger, you're going to be tempted at this point to hit baseline. Do not do that. You do not want to hit baseline yet. Um, that's going to throw things off and it's not going to, it's not going to work properly, I have found. So what I do now is I go ahead and I add my um, vertical row. So I go over here to vertical. I hit vertical and I also want to add that I make sure that I'm overlapping on both sides, at least one full design. And you'll see why. Because remember, we're going to offset this, so we want to make sure we got enough on both sides for each of the every other rows. Okay, so I'm at vertical. I just, I had pushed that, and now I'm going to go ahead and hit repeat. And so now that's going to add repeats plus, 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 plus. Yes, I like to do this myself. Okay, so now I'm going to go outside my area because I know that when I, um, when I do my wrap and when I start to shrink it by changing my gap that it's going to come together and I'm probably going to have to add a few more rows. So I always add a few extra rows on outside of the area. So now I have that. Now the next thing I'm going to do is now I need to take this design and I need to stagger every other row. Okay, so now we've repositioned the camera so you can see what I'm going to do next. So now we've overfilled our area. We have blank spots here because we have to offset each of the, the rows, i.e. wrap every other row. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and right below edit, you should see a button that says wrap. I'm going to push wrap. And now, the one thing I want you to remember is once you hit wrap, over here, what we had done before I did that was we added vertical rows. So we have vertical highlighted. Now, I don't want to do the next thing with vertical highlighted because what we're trying to stagger is the horizontal rows, not the vertical row. So what I want to do is I want to go back to horizontal here. So I hit horizontal. Now my horizontal is highlighted. My wrap is highlighted. And now what you're going to see are these three areas. We have window. We have row. Whoops. We have row. Oops, let me get rid of that. Get rid of that. We have row. And just hit the X if you ever accidentally hit something like that. We have row. And then we have gap. Now what we want to wrap is the row. So don't go to windows because sometimes you can go to window. And by the way, we actually want to wrap it or stagger it one half, i.e. 50%, I guess would be the percentage. So it automatically has a button that says half. Now remember, we don't want window, we want row. So I'm gonna hit half and look what just happened to the design. So every other row now staggered to get that wonderful Baptist fan look, but we still have our gap going on here. So now what we need to do is we need to close that gap. But this is, you got to follow each of my steps. At this point, it's real tempting to go down here and hit minus, 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 minus. What's wrong with that? I'm on horizontal. So that means the gap is on the horizontal. You need to go over here and now you need to hit vertical again. And now what you need to do is to minus your gap. Now I'm gonna go down here to the slider, the plus or minus, and I'm gonna bring us in close so you can see. I wanna get a nice good look at that gap. And now I'm going to hit minus. I'm going to keep hitting that, push, 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 and yes, I do like to push, 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 rather than push and hold. I just prefer that. I have found funny things happen when I push and hold, occasionally. Okay, and so notice how now it's starting to come together. Okay, so now we're getting down to the blank spot. I'm just going to scroll up to stay in the design as I minus my gap, because we're going to have to add some rows. Now, 
let me go in just a wee bit tighter. Okay, so here is where that row is going to touch the second row. So what I like to do is I like to minus my gap. I like to actually make it touch because in the in, in a perfect world, that would be wonderful. Let me do minus one more time. It is touching. Now it is set up as a perfect um, Baptist fan that looks great. But I also know that as I quilt this, the quilt is going to change a little bit. So what I like to do is I like to leave just a little bit of fudge space. So I'm going to do plus, plus. So just, and I, now notice it touched. I backed it off one, two, three times. And so that still looks great on the quilt. It's not, it's going to look like it touched, right? Even if it doesn't touch exactly, it's going to look that way. But I'd rather have that than have it go over that line. So now... I'm going to go back down here and hit my home button. And now I see the whole design. So the whole design is there now, but it doesn't fill all my quilt space. So I need to add my rows, right? So that's the next thing we need to do. So what I'm going to do is I am now going to go back up here because we've already wrapped. It knows it needs to wrap. It knows how the design is set up. I'm going to turn my wrap off. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add my rows, which means now what I need to do is to go back to modify and then go back to repeat. Now remember, you want to make sure that you're on vertical and not on horizontal. Um, because, and we are, we're on vertical. I need to add more rows. We need to add more vertical rows. So I go here to repeats, add, add, and do you see how that's adding the rows? And it kept, um, it ke it's doing the, um, the wrap is in place. So everything's good. So now I have my whole area plus the outside filled. So now what I want to do is I want to get rid of all of the outside, but the first thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and baseline the whole design. So I'm going to go over here to baseline. I baseline that whole design. And now the next thing I want to do is crop the design. So I go back up here to modify. And then I go to crop. And what do I want to crop? Well, I want to crop the outside. So we've cropped that, but look at all the... Um, tie offs, the starts and stops, and all that around. I want to get rid of all those, so I go over here to edges and I push edges. That cleaned up all of those. So now I have a complete design, and I, you, I can see my start spot up there, which is in an odd space because of the way that I've cropped it. Totally cool. That's the way it works. Now, the one other thing that I need to do now again is what? I've cropped it. Even though we baselined it before we cropped it, we now need to baseline it again to take this new part into a design. Let me take a second and say this. What will happen sometimes is you'll get to this point and you'll automatically skip to file save to save the design without hitting baseline. And so what will happen is something will happen during your quilt and what you don't realize is it's cropped within the area, but it's not cropped on the underside of the area. So that whole design before we cropped it is still in there. So you have to, have to, have to, have to go up here once you've cropped and you need to hit that baseline one more time. Got to do that. Now, so now my design is there and now I can go ahead and I can save it. So I'm going to go up to File. I am now going to go here to Save. And now I'm going to save what? My workspace. And now it's going to come up here. It's going to say workspace number, whatever it is. I'm going to hit Save. And now I have saved it. Just like anything else, we have saved everything. And we are ready to quilt. 
So at this point now, you would go ahead and you would repeat the normal steps when you do an edge-to-edge -edge quilt. And at this point, if you need any more uh, instructions, then you're going to refer back to the edge-to-edge -edge, uh, movie director's cut um, because it's going to be exactly that. Once you've saved it, now you're just going to go ahead and quilt it. The only thing that's different as far as this from a regular edge-to-edge -edge is doing the steps that I just showed you my way of how to wrap or to stagger it 50%. All right? So now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to quilt this quilt. You get the point. You know now if you need any other instructions, let's say your thread breaks or any of that, that is on the um, director's cut, the edge-to-edge -edge, uh, basic one that we have on YouTube. As always, thank you so much for joining us with our time here. Those of you that are struggling with this and had asked me to make a little video on how I do this, there you go. Take care of yourself, take care of each other, and we'll see you all down the road. Bye, everybody.